Hello and welcome to a new Blender developer sneak peek. I'm your host Thomas Beck and the emphasis this time is on all the awesome new features for the sequence editor in the soon to be released Blender version 2.77. The test builds are out, so please download and test it. If you'd like to support me and make sure that more videos are created more frequently, then use the Amazon link in the video description to buy my German Blender book or buy other stuff from Amazon with the link. But now I wish you a lot of joy with the following sneak peek. So first topic, the Gaussian blur effect has been incredibly speedified. The um, effect has been applied here already. This is the image. And that is the effect. You can add it via effect strip and then Gaussian blur. And it has only two options, the size X and the size Y. And when we now uh, enter, for example, five pixel, a uh, five pixel blur, then you can see that it's pretty fast in the 2.76. And let, let it, let's increase that to 10. Then you can see it's lasting a bit longer and 20 will last even longer. See, it's calculating and calculating and now it's there. Let's now test that in the 2.77 release. First with five, an immediate, an immediate result, and then with 20. And uh, again, an immediate result. So as you can see, it has really in an incredible speed up 50, even 100 should be no problem at all. So that's it for the Gaussian blur effect. Next is the white balance modifier. And this is a modifier that I uh, created while I was editing videos for Christmas, as you can see here. And uh, therefore I just uh, cut out one frame and this frame shows pretty much all that the um, modifier does. Let's just edit by hitting add strip modifier white balance. And then let's choose the value that should be white in the image later on. And I define this value as to be white. And as you can see now, the complete image is now altered that this uh, uh, value is the new white point. And that is all the modifier does. It is meant for video, but it can be also used on images, as you can see here. And yeah, that's my present for Blender for this release. Next on our list is the tone map modifier. And the tone map modifier was al already available in the compositor. And it's meant for tone mapping. Who would have thought that? And tone mapping is the process of mapping one um, value range into another uh, value range. And in this specific case, it's for, meant for HDRs because HDRs are ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity, almost. <laughs> and um, those values that uh, can't be displayed properly on your monitor, or on, your, on your display device, like uh, a monitor, are shown overexposed, overexposed or completely black. As you can see here, that's completely overexposed. But when I now add a uh, tone map modifier like I've done here and enable it, then you can see immediately that those values are not indeed um, overexposed. They were just not uh, displayable by your monitor. And by enabling those mapping techniques that are defined by Arch, uh, RH simple or RD photoreceptor, uh, you can then transform those values into values that your monitor can actually display. Let's continue with the text effect. And the text effect was introduced in the last release, I think. You should uh, just look at the sneak peeks, then you would see when it's in, in, it was introduced. And it's under effect strip and then text. And as you can see here, there is this text edit strip, strip input word. It's under effect strip. Um, if you select it, then there is this text with a certain size that you can change and all those locations uh, things there. But there's a new, a new um, property as well, and it is wrap width. And this property defines how uh, wide your text is is going max. And if you, for example, say it's 0 0.20, that's 20% of the image's dimension, 
um, then you see that the uh, texts are word wrapped. Before we're coming to the minor additions, let's just see one last thing that is um, in, in effect when you combine grease pencil or scene strips with other um, strips in the VSA. And let's just hide this one so you see which stri uh, strip is beneath. That's this one. And when I now unhide it, then you can see that there is a grease pencil uh, layer um, available in this scene. Let's just switch to this scene. By going to default, then you see this scene is uh, sw uh, switched automatically. And you can see that I wrote down, this is a grease pencil test. And when we now switch back to the video editing, then you see even when I set this strip here to alpha over, like I've done here, you can't see the um, underlying strip. And that is because this, uh, this gray background here is the, um, let me just switch back, is the background in this scene. And now with Blender 2.77, there is the option to enable this alpha mode transparent here. And if you enable that, then it gets uh, in that it that it is uh, taken into account when we create the scene and let's just refresh it by clicking and then you see it's now working perfectly this is a crease pencil test over the background and when you render it via this OpenGL render button then you see it's working Let's now come to the tiny bits that has been changed in the VSE, but they are nevertheless very cool. The first one is the uh, mask relative and absolute time. And that is here the, uh, let me just introduce a curve modifier and then go to masks. So now we got a relative and absolute here that wasn't there before. And that is doing the following. If you select the mask here, some mask, that I drew around those um, around those mushrooms. I hope they are called mushrooms. Um, and when you now animate this mask, then this mask animation is dependent on the um, scene frame, uh, on the scene time for uh, in general. But when you have it as in re relative, then it's offset to the start of the script of the strip of this strip. So that is completely different and um, makes animating a mask and using this animation in different um, manners, for example, to uh, darken edges or to, to um, color correct certain parts of the image, uh, really possible at first. Um, that is the, the um, relative and absolute. And then there is the apply modifiers or replace modi append modifiers or replace modifiers so if you got a modifier down there for example the white balance modifier and you'd like to have this modifier that is uh, available there appended to this one then you would just say i select this one and this and go to copy to select the strips and then you can choose replace or append. And in our case, we would choose append. And now this, um, this strip has both modifiers um, applied, the white balance and the curves. And formal, formally, it was only possible to replace them. Another really nice feature is the automatic frame rate changing when you import a movie strip. And we can simply test that. Look at this frame rate. It's 25 frames per second. When you now import a movie, for example, the documentation about the life of Pi, then you see that it's changed accordingly to the movie frames per second. And that is uh, 23.98 frames per second. And when other strips are in the project, then it wouldn't be changed. So don't be afraid that ever anything is going wrong if you import a new movie strip from now on. But it's very helpful to set it up first if you import it and then um, it's, it gets changed automatically. 
Another really nice thing has been transferred from the gooseberry branch in uh, the last weeks and it is uh, scene meter strips and to show you what that does we have to change the scene to this prepared strip scene and in this scene I've got four or five strips and those strips are just lying there and what we now what we're now doing is we change the strip to uh, the, the scene to the VSE scene and import the scene where those strips are located so just go to scene then strips scene and when we now look at this scene then you see there is no strip showing up here but that's only because you didn't uh, notice this new checkbox here use sequence and when you tick that then this those strips as you can see here in a lighter gray are shown down there and up there so what you can do now is mo have more or less a scene file where you organize your strips or several scene files where you organize your strips and then import those strips into the VSE and have them um, edited all together. So it's a kind of a meta strip design in Blender now. And this concludes the developer sneak peek already. I hope that you had fun watching and learning new stuff and I hope to see you on my Google Plus, YouTube and Twitter page. Please share it to make the new features well known and now happy planning. Bye!